<clears throat> okay. Hey guys, I'm gonna get you promoted here. So hang on uh, un momento. Good evening, Gary. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good, sir, thank you. Hey, Melody. Let's see, Justine. <laughs> hey, Gary. <laughs> you know what's funny, Melody? I was just getting ready for the class. I'm thinking, I need to, I need to call Melody. Oh. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm glad. I've been in, I went to Portugal. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I, yeah, but i um, happy to be back. Now, do you, do you have family there? No, I, we just went for a, a vacation. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, well, I'm glad, we're glad you're back and. Thank you. And Jean, I'm going to promote you here in un momento. Let's see if I can get you over to the other the other side, the panelist side. There you are. All right, I'll grab the rest of the people. Okay, let me get you promoted to. Uh, where did you go? There you are. All right. Remote may co host. Okay, should, should be co host in about a fraction of a second. Cool. Thanks, Annie. Yep. And uh, John's on. I'm pretty sure I saw Shastine. Hang on one second. Let me just double check here. Panelist. Yep, there's John. We go alphabetically. Uh, I don't see Betty yet. And there's Shastine. Okay, good. There's Shastine. Hi, Shastine. Hello. How are you? Very good, thank you. Awesome. Well, we're glad. We're glad you're here, and I appreciate you being a willing willing participant on the panel. You and John, and I think Betty should be here too, I guess. And, um. I like doing this stuff and we we obviously if we have guests, it seems like more and more as time goes on. And um sometimes it's nice just to have us guys on and everybody I think is more comfortable asking questions and you know, be me and more at ease. So okay, we got 24 so far. And let me just double check here real quick. Hopefully Betty's okay. Let me send a message. Where's Betty? Here we go. Okay, let's see. Hi, Betty. How are you? To class. I think. Okay, okay let's see. But <clears throat> she might already be on. Usually that happens to me. We got back to attendees. Yep, not yet. Okay, guys, we're going to give Betty a few more minutes here. Um, and what we're doing for the for those of you who are not uh, uh, um, aware of what we're doing, we haven't done this before, and it's come up a number of times. And I like to do this um, twice, maybe three times a year. Um, at a minimum once a year is have a panel of our own folks on the panel. And tonight will be Shastine, John, and and uh, hopefully Betty. Um, and all of them bring a lot of strengths to the team. I mean, all of you, everybody here brings something to the team. I mean, I've, I have the best conversations, guys, with you guys. It's hard to, hard to, to quantify it sometimes. Um, but Shastine is building her own team up in the great Northwest. And, and John, of course, for those of you who do know him, he's a, he's a John Maxwell um, coach, okay, master coach. And 
Betty is just a strong performer. She she just focuses on the fundamentals and does them, you know, regularly disciplined. I mean, just never lets up on the gas. And recently she was voted to be top five, not top 5%, but top five commercial agents in the Tampa area. And she was on a panel there. How about them apples, you know? So, and for those of you who've been around since the beginning, you know, you've, you've noticed since she was, um, wearing pigtails and, and bobby socks, right? So, <laughs> so it's fun to watch one of her own rise through the ranks like that. Um, so now some of you may have seen the, uh, there was a survey that went out. I forget when Beverly sent that, probably last month or the month before, asking for your input and your questions and things like that. And I've got my own list of questions. Um, but I wonder what you guys, what really what this was about is to have you engage and ask questions and, and get um, details and facts on things you've been wanting to find out about. So, Gary? Yes, ma'am. Betty's in. Hey, Betty. Hello, I'm sorry. It's that's kind of true. family emergency. Oh, that's okay. You're Hopefully everything's okay. Everything is good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Good. Well, I, I, I like your top. You always you have the, the coolest clothes. I mean, it's you make me want to go out and get a boat again. I'm serious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And I've, and I've had three. You know, I think after the second one, I'd ask, I'd say to myself, why are you buying another boat? But they're fun, you know? So in any case, guys, um, if you'd like, go ahead and, and type in questions in the chat box so we can see them. Uh, Gene and I will monitor them. <clears throat> and also uh, Betty and Chastine and John can see them too. So I want you to think in three categories tonight, okay? One is really about mindset. And quite frankly, that it all starts there. That's why we always start every new agent on the team, you know, one second, with a vision exercise, because I, I want to see where they are currently in their business, but also where they are in their mindset and where it is they'd like to go. Um, it, it pretty much, it's like the foundation for everything, whether it's business, personal relationships, what have you. Um, it's extremely important to, to know yourself and know yourself well. And one of the ways to do that is to just engage with other people and, and you'll find out, you know, where you stand in things. But um, if it, the, the stronger and the more positive mindset you have, the more relevant anything I could ever possibly teach you would become, okay? You understand the connections better and the alignment and alignment is one of the things that I've always found to be uh, extremely important. When you, what you're doing is in alignment with who you are and what you're looking to achieve, it's obvious you're going to get better results. You're going to work harder for it and be more disciplined, be more persistent, resilient, all these things that are required to be successful. What I can teach you academically is, is a small part, okay? So in any case, uh, mindsets are extremely important. And when it comes to building a business, some of you probably would like to build, actually, let's Raise your hand or just type in a chat box, I do, if you would like to build your own small team or big team, whatever, it, just your own model, your own team. Absolutely. That's what this was about. You know, it, it's, it's designed to help you identify what it is you'd like to do and build it. Um, and when you have a team, quite frankly, you can get a lot more done than you can by yourself. So Shashteen is already doing it. Shashteen was the first person on the team to, to go forward and build her own team, right? Um, and then when it comes to actually producing and putting some points on the board, you know, Betty's, Betty's one of the best that I've seen. I mean, she, she focuses on the fundamentals, the booklet, the letter, be, being part of some local groups. That's where she really shines. Guys, is the networking. It, it, it's paramount to your success. You can't, there's no way you can succeed at higher levels without being part of some group, okay? Now, everybody's part of this group. That's obvious. But what I mean is a local group where you are, particularly groups of investors, um, and also more importantly, or just as importantly, as other professionals and other fields and other industries. Extremely important, okay? So if you have questions, go ahead and fire away. But what I'd like to do is um, go around to, to John and Shastine and Betty and just have them just give you three to five minutes, um, you know, of, of how they've been able to, be, to become successful 
and had that drive enough and the ambition enough, and more importantly, the willpower to take steps forward to make progress. So, so John, would you mind kind of heading us off here? And, and um, he's smiling because I think he knew I was going to call him. <laughs> but uh, kind of give us a, a sort of an overview. Um, and if you want to chime in with um, John Maxwell, I'm, I'm all for it because I've read his stuff, taken some programs, and absolutely, he's, he's one of the grandmasters. You know, and I know that's a big part of your, your life. So if you wouldn't mind sharing that, that'd be awesome. You know? No, not at all. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Uh, good, my, my actually, it's good. Good evening to you guys. I'm here in California, northern side, and so it's nice and sunny, and we're still a little afternoon. And uh, so it's good to see you guys up on the Zoom call. And so my name is John Gigi, and uh, you know, Gary kind of talked a little bit about you know who I am. I am a certified John Maxwell coach, and I also have another coaching program that I developed myself. Called 42V. So basically, to answer your question, uh, what you were saying, Gary, uh, for me, what I have learned, I'm sure you guys have learned the different uh, profiles, the personality profiles that are out there DISC, D I S C. And uh, that was one of them. I mean, there's Myers Briggs, there's a whole bunch of other uh, personality profiling tools out there. DISC is the one that, you know, coming from my previous company is one of the ones that I've used heavily. And so with the DISC profile, if you guys know, D is highly driven, I is influential, S is kind of like more passive aggressive, and C is compliant, more analytical. I'm a high SC. So when you look at realtors, most of them are all DIs. They're highly driven and then highly influential. And so for many years, I struggled with that because I'm like, well, I want to be a successful realtor. I want to be a successful business person. However, I don't fall into those categories. So what I've learned is, is that I had to make some adjustments. And that's what's really good about learning these personality profiles, because then you learn about yourself. And then now you know how you can make those adjustments so that you could, um, you know, fill in those areas where you're kind of weak in. And so I personally put myself in a personal growth plan and journey so that I can learn about all these different personality profiles, learn all these different entrepreneurial concepts, and then really learn about who I really am and then make those adjustments. And that's when I started to realize my D started to grow a little bit. My I started to grow a little bit because if, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I am uh, an introvert. And so in the past, I would never want to be talking in public. Like right now, I, you wouldn't see me doing this and you wouldn't see me talking on stage either. And so in the past, I was a, I was a, a recluse, you know, just wanted to be by myself. I didn't want to hang out with anybody, did not like large crowds. So what I had to do is make some changes in my life. If I wanted to be a successful entrepreneur, I wanted to be a successful realtor, well, in order to be a realtor, I need to be out in front of people. I need to be out there doing presentations, meeting strangers. So I have to get over that. And so why am I sharing this is, is that is that for me, what I have learned is identified the things that I needed help in. And then I seek help so that I can, um, you know, uh, brushing up my skills in those areas. And then now I can go and pursue the things that I wanted to pursue. And so it took a lot of really digging deep and finding out who I am and then realizing what is my passion? What is my purpose? What is it I want to do? Okay, then if I can't do that now, then what do I need to do today so that I'll be able to accomplish that tomorrow? And so it's been a journey and, you know, being a dyslexic, being an introvert, you know, getting to the point where now I can read two to three books a, a month and love being in front of crowds, love talking to people. Um, it's been a growth journey. However, it's been the biggest key word would be intentional. It's being intentional about it, being focused about it, knowing what you want to do and then going after it and being purposeful throughout the whole process. Awesome. Thank, thanks, John. Hey, hey guys, what I do what, I use? Oh, I was going to add something, John. I love what you said. And I absolutely love John Maxwell. And um, I just pulled up because I learned from John Maxwell that he says that whenever you read a book to actually go into your phone and your notes and begin to write out key things that speak to you so that you can go back 
back to it instantly. Because how many times do we read a good book and we're like, that book was awesome. And they're like, great, what was it about? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and so I began doing that. And when you were talking, you know, what I heard you say is, that, you know, first you were an introvert and, um, you know, and that you had to kind of grow through being uncomfortable. And he says some of your greatest growth, I wrote down some of your greatest growth, if you have the right response to it, will be through your most difficult times in life. And I just thought, oh, it's so good. Because so many times we do, we want to hide under a rock, a blanket over our head. And just say, I don't want to work today. This is uncomfortable. I'm frustrated, you know. And instead of looking at it as a way like, great, you're uncomfortable, great, you're learning something new, you're overwhelmed, wonderful. Now you're going to be able to grow out of being uncomfortable. So that's how we grow. And so I absolutely love that because it's man, I I have a couple of books. I wrote down several things that um, he said every pain introduces us to ourselves. Mm -hmm. that's I love true. that. It's a very I'm powerful like, statement. Yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, these things are just so good to have in our arsenal to kind of get us out of the funk. Yep. Because sometimes the grind of real estate just, just never being done. You know, sometimes we can get into our own heads and it can really begin to affect our day, our energy level, how we would then respond to our clients, how we then maybe do our activities, you know, and so having the right state of mind is so key. And it starts right when you wake up and being conscious and aware of what's going through your mind right when you wake up. Because let me tell you, I have gotten, I barely have my eyeballs open and like negative Nelly was in my ear. About, I mean, before I could even get my eyes open and I had to really bring that back into, um, you know, control and say, you know, no, uh, -uh I don't feel like it. I'm going to do it. Nope. I, yes, I am going to do this forever you know so sometimes you have to do your own self-talk and you know get yourself off the ledge so to speak so okay i'll be quiet now <laughs> no, 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 that's no. Awesome. i i love it and i love the part where you talked about pain there's a full chapter in the 15 invaluable laws of growth it's called pain and when when your pain is greater than the desire to get what you want and you're never going to move you're never going to do anything so what we have to do is shift that mindset so that the pain of not getting what you want is greater than the pain that you're actually experiencing. And I'm putting together, I'm writing a book right now. And one of the things I was just talking about in my mind today was pain. And there's three types of pain that I came up with. One is mental pain. And that's more of an, a, an emotional pain. It's a response to something, some type of emotional or some type of a, um, you know, a mindset that's, that's your subconscious mind is throwing at you. And then there's the physical pain, right? It hurts. You're working out. You get that kind of pain. However, that pain is going to help. Um, but then there's that growth pain, which is going to be that pain when you're working out. It hurts. And, and uh, however, if you keep on pushing yourself, you're going to experience growth. You're going to experience some results out of it. And so, however, the mental pain is the one that we struggle with the most. And, and it's not a physical pain. However, it's like, when you want to do something, you say, okay, this is the, this is what I want to attack. This is my goal. And then you're like, oh man, I don't know if I can do that. Am I good enough? That's pain. And that's the pain that you're fighting with. Am I good enough? You know, can, do I have the capability of doing that? And so what we have to do is, is kind of see that and just twist that or turn that around and then see, and then, um, and then really start to program your brain and there's a process over it. And we can have another discussion on that, but it's programming, reconditioning your brain to think, am I able to do that? Well, maybe I don't know because I've never experienced it, but what the heck, let's do it now. Let's, 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 let's just experience what's the worst that can happen. And when you start turning that around, now you're, you're conditioning your brain to, to, to respond differently. And then you're going to end up having those results that you desire to have. And, but it's all mindset building. It's, it's, it's definitely a journey. I, I call it a belief system. It's building up that belief system. So when I talk to people, we, we can be a, have a belief system that's so shallow and then we've been conditioned to fail. So then we have all those past experiences and trauma or whatnot and those events that conditions us to think the certain way, which influence, influences our behaviors. And so our belief system is very weak. So um, we use the word, I can't, you know, uh, or maybe, or I don't have what it takes, you know, you know, I don't have the skills, I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the tools. 
And so what ends up happening is, is you build up that belief system. And then before you know it, you'll get to a point where like, you know what, I don't know, but let's figure it out. Let's make it happen. Or, you know what, I, I am a champion. I have what it takes. I've been created for greatness. I've been created for a greater purpose. You know what? Lies, get out of the way. Let's go. Punch fear in the space and just move forward. But that takes a time and building up your belief system so that you have that mental toughness and then you're able to take on whatever things comes your way. Yep. I love it. You know, that, that saying about when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of the change you, you need to make, then you'll make the change. But the reality is it's, it's perceived pain. Mm -hmm. Change isn't always painful. It's just all in our head. We just yeah. think it's, it just, it's only, it's fear because we haven't done it before. Right. Mm -hmm. And the many of you can probably recall times in your life when you finally actually tried something you're like, yeah, that wasn't so bad. Now there's other times where things are hard. I guarantee you're going to, you're going to have some challenges in life. But, but the point is, is, it's usually not as bad as you think it is, right? Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two is you actually get better at it. D developing yourself, growth, personal development, it, it, it's a skill that you can learn just like you can learn to do arithmetic and reading and writing and riding a bike. You actually get better at it. So what this means is, even if you don't believe currently that you can, just know that it is learnable. It's a skill that's learnable, which means everybody can, right? right? You know, so my gosh, in any case, uh, well, let's, let's do this guys type in your questions. What I'd like to do is, is move into Shastine, right? Cause she's taken this and when she and I first met in Vancouver, Washington, this is several years ago now teaching. Um, and I was teaching a class and then ultimately she came onto the team here. One of the first things she wanted to do was actually have her own team. And I said, I, I, I think we can do that. You know, we, it, Checked with um, EXP and I said, yep, you can do that. We had to structure it a certain way. So Shastine sometimes calls herself like the, the redheaded stepchild, but she's not a redheaded stepchild. She's a wonderful person and talented and smart. And she's got that can-do attitude. So Shastine, would you mind taking us to the next step then? And um, like, what was your inspiration for wanting to build a team? Did, I can't remember. Did you have a team before you came here or was this something that, okay. Yeah, but kind of fill us in there, that, that initial inspiration, and let's go from there, you know? You're muted. Thank you. Um, the initial inspiration was, um, was uh, I, you know, usually sometimes people can spot talent, so I was with a brokerage that, that knew that I had some talent that I didn't know I had. And so, you know, they began to put me on the pathway of recruiting their agents, training their agents. And that's when we were doing new construction and, and land development. So we represented several builders and, and uh, I began setting up their systems, hiring their agents, training their agents and doing sites. And then I realized, what in the world am I doing this for? I'm working for somebody else um, instead of myself. <clears throat> and so um, I had left, went to, went to a different brokerage, Big K. And, um, you know, and from there, you know, started off like, you know, we all do, we get an administrative assistant. Um, and then we quickly realize what things we want to embrace and what things we want to let go. So for me, um, I wanted to focus on listings and I wanted a buyer's agent. Um, so tried the buyer's agent. You know, we all go through pains when we grow, uh, when we move into developing a team, just because it, it's about how to provide value to them leads to them setting up expectations, um, you know, holding somebody else accountable and, and it can be like herding cats. Um, and, you know, and the frustration of, you know, not being able to, um, to see somebody rise to the potential that you see in them, you know, so you go through all of those emotional um, things and which causes growth. Hey. Um, but, um, you know, I, I always say you, you just first need to identify what things you don't want to do and those things that you don't want to do, can they be leveraged more from, um, you know, administrative assistant? Um, I think these days it's smarter to go into a showing assistant. What I did, um, you know, at one time I had um, three full-time assistants, a runner and a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I quickly, you know, uh, changed to where one of the assistants wanted to become an agent. 
Uh, and so it was really good because then I just moved her into being a showing assistant and I paid her 10% of um, any home that I had her show. And what was, what was fair about that was the fact that whether she showed one home, she still got 10% of the commission. Whether she showed them 15 homes, she still got 10% of the commission. Um, and she also worked um, as my assistant. So she had that for those that are the SCs, like John was saying, you know, that stability, wanting stability. Um, for her, she wanted the stability of uh, working in an office. However, she liked the fun of opening up doors, but she didn't like the negotiation parts. So, yeah. you know, that's the perfect showing assistant. Um, and so that worked out really well. And actually through that, I just learned it's better to probably start, even though I was told that, but I didn't do that. And I think that was part of my own drunk monkey and believing that, you know, who with a real estate license would want to just be a showing assistant and, you know, and not pay them as much as if they were buyers. But there are people that are out there that um, are more than willing to that. And, and for me, it was a win-win. I had her as a, you know, as an administrative assistant inside the office and as a showing assistant. So um, I would go back to that model, but I'm not at that model at this time. I just you know, I just have a, a buyer's agent, I like to do the standard buyer's agent, um, just because I do want to go back to just being a, just focusing on listing and actually keep saying it, move more into, um, you know, focusing, purposely focusing, not tripping and falling into agent recruitment, but, um, but into more of just bringing people into EXP because EXP is just a great company to be at. So um, yeah. being more purposeful to have those conversations. And spending more time in that arena is is more of a where I want to go. Um, but um, but yeah, so I kind of emerged. I did a little bit of everything from building somebody else's to building my own to then collapsing to rebuilding. Um, and so it all starts with mapping out exactly what you want to do, how you you know what meaning what things you like to do, what things you not want to do, um, and then you know building things or you know building platform and people around that. Yeah, that, and I appreciate that too. I'm, I'm, now, the good news for me is I know some of the folks that are underneath you on your team, and one of them that comes to mind is is uh, Nataman, we Moni, we call her Moni, and she's such a wonderful person, and and she you know went through the process, capped, you know she capped on the team, so she's now in Group B officially, and and obviously working underneath you. But but uh, what was her when you first came across her? Was she a did you attract her through agent attraction or is there some, she, someone you already knew or how did, how did she get started? Yeah. You know um, yeah. She wasn't somebody that I knew. She was uh, the daughter-in-law of a friend that she had a real estate license. She, you know, she was looking to get support and really wanted to have somebody to, to mentor her um, and to work alongside of. And so in meeting with her as with all, I have a lot of agents that will reach out to me, especially when they're all getting real, into the real estate license. I have three people getting the real estate license. I have a new one onboarding this next week, but um, that is already a licensed agent. But, um, and it just seems, you know, I have a really frank conversation with them about what their expectation of what they're gonna encounter when they get the real estate. Um, and then having that frank conversation of what the team life will look like versus mm -hmm. a solo agent. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to encourage them more in believing in themselves, but there are truly certain people that do better with having, uh, you know, that synergy of, you know, having a partner, you know, a teammate that they can lean into and the value proposition a lot of times that when I'm talking about people who are working in, in um, you know, in my organization would be, uh, would be the fact that we're able to cover and support one another. So it allows for that ability for them to leave and to know that their business is going to be covered or if they're showing three other buyers, you know, that one of us can go and, and help and support and there's not, you know, and it's not going to have to be a payment one to another. It's just something as far as, as being there and working as a cohesive group, truly, um, with, you know, supporting however each member wants to grow because some people want to grow in different ways because there's so many different ways that you can business in real estate right. you know um so i think i answered your question didn't i yeah yeah when, another question too is when you were speaking about the when you were getting started i think you actually said you had you had three assistants you had actually more assistants or just as many assistants that you did people in the field 
which is fascinating because most of us, when we first start off, we're thinking, well, if I even hire an admin or an assistant, what would I possibly have them do? Did I even give them enough to give them a full-time job? And yet you had a, a handful of them. And it's just amazing how much, when you get into that habit of, I call it giving up responsibility, but not control, you maintain control, but you delegate responsibility. You'd be surprised at how much you can actually delegate. I mean, I've got six employees, right? And we've got a big team, but I try to delegate as much as humanly possible so that I can remain objective and, and see the field, so to speak. But what, so when going back to that time frame, did that evolve naturally? Or is that something you had, like you knew in your mind when you started, I think I need three people or is it, was it? it no, you, you always grow to the level that your business is growing. And so, you know, and, and um, when something's really working well, it is going to naturally take away your time from behind the computer. So you're quickly needing to give away things that are behind the computer so that you can do more things that are face to face, you know. And so, um, you know, I mean, at that time, you know, I just I did a lot more transactions. And like I said, I got a buyer's agent halfway through it, um, you know, and I and I. I stumbled into that. So I didn't even train very well at that one time. Yeah. Um, you know, so because you know, you just you, you learn by by you know failing forward, like John Maxwell says, failing forward, you learn by failing forward. Um, but yeah, when it comes to us now, especially now that I'm doing the VA assistance, since we're working from home more, and and you guys, I, I had when I had my assistants, I did have an office, but I had an office so that they could go there to work and so that I can go in and, and make sure that they're working, you know, <laughs> you know, other than that, um, I, you know, I didn't really need an office. So, you know, it, with the evolving of everything that's evolved over the last few years, you know, having a virtual assistant or somebody who just doesn't work in your office, you know, is, is pretty, it's a lot easier these days because we've all been made to get accustomed to new platforms of technology, which makes our lives easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me check the question box here. I know there were some some questions came in. I think some of them were were kind of like we have an inertia effect. They were from John's part of the presentation. Yeah, so we'll we'll get to those, John. Um, but Shastine, um, so when it comes to to money, um, I want to lead. I want to take this question and the answer is to lead in to 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 Betty and have her have Betty describe what she's doing in production. So what I'm trying to do is go from mindset to building team to production. So what what kind of things have you done or what kind of things is Moni doing or have done um, to bring in business? Have you fed her all the leads or she brought in some of her leads from her own efforts or if you could talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, we'll do joint marketing. So we'll put both of our faces on different print publications for her to give out to her sphere or to go to different uh, shops or places that she leaves those items. Um, you know, we work together to do videos together. So things that come in through our website, it has both of our faces on it as a bomb bomb video that goes out as the initial touch. Um, so then people begin to realize that there's multiple faces to um, Red Lane Associates. Um, and um, yeah, and I do give her direct business. So things okay. that as far as you know, leads directly, like with the name and the number and they're ready to buy a house. Yeah. You know, and then, so I do things, I chose, I chose, well, I'm doing things kind of like Gary did, which means I don't have their production under my name. Yeah. So, you know, my production is solely my production that I'm directly working with somebody. So um, I have it go under their name. And, you know, I, it, I do it like a referral fee and then, you know, and then they pay me a referral fee out of all the transactions that they get that is not a direct result from my book of business or sphere or leads that I'm giving them. Yeah, I, I love it because I, you know, I, when I was in the business in the early years, teams were more traditional, more location specific and more strict. In other words, it was everything was in a team name, all the listings, all the sales, and and the agents really weren't getting credit. And inherently that design, if anybody has ever done that, had that type of team or been on a team like that, you know it's a revolving door. Because once somebody gets trained, the real true entrepreneurs are never going to stay for that. Number one, they want a better split. Number two is 
they they want the, the credit for their own transactions, not just money monetarily, but they want the public to know their family, their friends, neighbors. So I really, I'm so glad you you're doing that, Shastine. And I, when I first tried it, I didn't know that it was going to work. Actually, I came to the XP because I said, "Look, this is what I'd like to do. I can't do this in in most other platforms, and I want to do this on a national scale." And they, we had a several meetings who said, "You know, we we're, we're going to be able to do this. Our platform will support that." And uh, you know, we're always improving and tweaking things and making it better. But for the most part. It really is. It's like you're. I. This is how I see myself. I'm sure you're the, sort of the same way. You're the guide, but yet you're able to make and you're able to make them the hero. You're make, making Monet the hero in her own world of real estate, right? So, hey guys, if you have questions, uh, keep just enter them in. We'll get to them. Yeah, there was yeah. one question that came in from Melanie that said, "How did you balance her schedule, meaning my assistant, with being with being your assistant and showing assistant duties?" Um, so what we did is normally the showings would take place in the afternoons or in the evenings, uh, or she would just clock out and literally go show houses and then come back, you know, cause sometimes they would one or two houses, you know, or sometimes I would start and I would do one or two and she would meet at the next house and she would just take them on from there. So, you know, it, it we never we just rolled with the punches depending on how it went and if I needed her. And so that's why sometimes she would show one. Sometimes she would sell all five, you know, it was really nice because then it became a nice handoff. <laughs> so then it was like, yeah, I'll show you the first day. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't show you ever again, <laughs> but I'll be there when it comes time to do the negotiation and I'll be, you know, so, you know, cause sometimes when you have people that are referred to you, you treat them a little different than a sign call or an ad call. Um, and so I didn't want anybody that was referring clients to me to really feel like, they were given to somebody else. I know I never really liked that feeling myself, you mm -hmm. know, when I have a relationship with an agent and I know their skills and how they're going to treat my clients. And then yet they're not servicing the referral that I give them. So, um, you know, so I do always now explain that to any agents that are referring, you know, if it should come up and I let them know it's a value to them because if I am busy, what's most important is that their referral is always taken care of. And so they're definitely always going to be taken care of by having somebody else on the team show them the home. But in the end, I'm still having the communication and still, still seeing them through the process and getting it closed. So yeah. that was it a bit, but that's how we did that. Um, and then I think the other one, I think the other ones were for John. Yeah. John, yeah. John can talk, talk, talk. Yeah. And that's a, that's a very creative approach that you developed and, and it's your own, you developed it yourself. It wasn't like, you know, and I probably didn't even have anything to do with that, quite frankly. The way you, the way you, that evolved, the way you designed that, was through your own your own mindset. I mean, that was your creation. You know, pretty neat. And that's what I love about the the way the industry is changing and evolving is um, our roles change and evolve as the industry changes and evolves. And Lord knows where it's going to go in the next couple of years. I we can kind of look at the direction and and you know the path that it's on, but sometimes we're it doesn't even make sense for us to guess because something will, some new technology will come up or who knows what, and uh, it'll change things again. The key is to, to really be in touch, be engaged and do things like this. I mean, this is how you stay in, in front of the curve, you know? Um, so if, if, if we, if we could, Betty, I want to um, kind of come over to you now. And so in production, um, and just as everybody knows, you know, I've known Betty for a couple of years also prior prior to building the team here at EXP um, when I was teaching in Florida. Uh, you know, excellent student. I mean, she was always engaged, asking the right questions. And then coming over here, you know, she was required to be more independent. Um, and she really just did follow the instructions and worked on the fundamentals. And specifically, they were the, the getting her database up and running building her booklet and it's an amazing if you haven't seen betty's booklet it's absolutely world class um using the letter and i think every time she says let out she gets calls but the biggest thing is putting yourself out there you know putting yourself out there into the world and in, in a couple of different groups um and those relationships that she's building the networking is so it was the same thing with me guys of all the things i've done i can probably point out me being part of other people's groups and me building groups is 
probably the most important factor in, in my success. Just, you just, it's, I don't even know how to describe it, but you're in there swinging the bat, you get on base, you get some base hits and you get a home run every now and then. But every now and then you get a grand slam home run, right? And it just comes out of left field. Somebody makes an introduction that you might not even realize how important it is till down the road. And that's the kind of thing that happened. That's what happened to Bobby Appleby. By the way, guys, Bobby Appleby called me the other day, uh, last week that he just had another baby. If he, he finally oh, had, a, wow. had, a, had a son. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm going to call him again, but, uh, amazing story. He just did it. He just did the things we talked about. Um, and he met an investor who was an attorney in Jacksonville, who was part of a larger group of a, a bigger syndic a syndication network where they were buying three and 400 unit apartment complexes. And he asked Bobby to be one of their key players. And he called me up and said, Bobby, this is, that's, this is what this is all about. This is to position you to do your thing and find your calling and big, get that, get that, that home run, grand slam home run. And obviously he took it, you know? So in any case, so back to Betty, uh, Betty, if you wouldn't mind, kind of start us off maybe at the beginning when we first got started, because some of these things you'd heard me talk about before, and you've probably done one or two of the things, but but you really kind of hit your stride and brought all three together. And this is just my opinion, but it seems to me like when you started in with the groups, the networking and the BNI and the, the uh, Tampa Club and things like that, even the Rio group out in, in a, a St. Pete and, and Clearwater, it's it was after that when things seemed to started to gel. So I, I, it's just my opinion, but tell me what your thought is on that so, and, and when you got started, you know? So my, my it's just like my path is different from everybody, I think. And uh, I started, uh, you know, the thing came when I met Gary and he was talking, I was at Keller William at that time and he was talking about uh, investors, working in investors. So, you know, every, for me, my cycle every two years. So I was in Keller Williams. I started with Keller Williams in real estate. And then after two years, I didn't learn anymore. And I knew with technology, they were behind. So I switched to another office in Palm Harbor and they had KW command. And I was like, this is not working. <laughs> so then I met, uh, Gary and said, okay, I work with investors and this, you don't have to make calls. And, and I said, oh, that's what I like. So what I say is take the opportunities, go every out there and have take the opportunities because I wouldn't go to that meeting with Gary. I would met, and I, I'm not sure I would stay in real estate because I'm not the type for residential real estate. I don't have the patience. I don't like the emotion. And uh, I am more like working with investors, the numbers. So that's why after a couple of years working with investors, I decided to switch to, well, to commercial. Not really switch because I still work with investors, but most of the investors, they also have a business. So when you say, when you go to networking groups and you say, I am a commercial realtor, they look at when you say I'm a residential way, it's like, oh, another one. So I hate that look. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I said, I don't want that. So anyway, so, and then I started, I did the, I listened to Gary. Everything he said, I did. <laughs> the, because I don't like cold call. That's the only thing I don't do. <laughs> so, Recording so, in progress. So you what, know, I, what did I did is... I uh, started with the letters mm -hmm. and then I did the booklet. I did a booklet mostly for commercial and I did my first in-person workshop with Gary. I, I was at the Tampa Club. Mm -hmm. I am a, mostly a networking person. So I am a member of the Economic Club of Tampa. So you have to be sponsored to be there. So I met somebody who sponsored me and also member of the Tampa Club. And uh, and I do also, I don't know, I'm ambassador for a, a Catholic high school. So I can talk about networking. And I, well, I have a, a lot of network anyways. Mm -hmm. So, and because I'm French, I work with the French community. 
also. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they asked me to be on the board for the French American Chamber of Commerce because they saw me and said, we will have more members with you, Betty, because I know you are go-getter. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have to know what you want. So I don't want a victim and who, what I don't want because, you know, I was working before in the hospi hospitality and before I moved to Florida, I had about uh, 50 employees and I'm done. So that's it. So I can work and I'm very uh, happy with uh, the same thing with Shastin is that I work with other agents. I met another EXP realtor and she does residential. We, we're going to work to, together, but then it will be only with your fees because I don't want to be on the team and this and that. No, I, I'm not. No, I don't have time for that. And also what I'm looking is VA to help me in the administration because I realized that I don't have enough time. Uh, so what else uh, do I have to say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, really, if, if so, what, what I would suggest, guys, for, for all the participants, and if you're a guest, this is a perfect opportunity to pick the brains of, of you know, three of the most important people on the team. You know, the three different roles, three different personalities. But for example, you know, if your production is not where it needs to be, you know, all three, Shastine, Betty, and John, all three have produced well, different markets. Uh, Betty, Betty's in a market that's probably um, price-wise around the median range for the country. Shastine's above that, where she is. She's Vancouver, Washington is just over the river from Portland, right? So it's part of the same metroplex. And then John's in one of the most expensive markets, which is the Bay Area, East Bay specifically, um, but all have done well. And I've, not, I've watched, I'll just give an example. Um, John will be quiet for a while and all of a sudden he'll just bring in three or four or five, just boom, boom, boom deals. And Shastine's extremely consistent, right? Deal after deal to there every single month. And Betty's the same way now. Betty's production went from, from not that many, maybe two in the first several months to all of a sudden now consistently leasings and sales on a consistent basis. So if I was a bright young man, I was just starting out, I would probably ask him what Give us an example of some of the marketing you're doing. So would anybody like to ask that question? I would love that. I, yes, for all, all of the above. And, and I was just actually <laughs> thinking about Betty um, because I'm, I'm really fascinated and I want to see that booklet. <laughs> so if that's fine. Well, you have, you know, uh, you know, you have to think about what you want to how you want to present yourself because my booklet is focusing on uh, commercial and investment properties like duplex, triplex, multifamily. So I, I, it's simple. And then you, you have, I took the thing on the canvas and then I built, I put my profile and the logos and I also put my partners because I have a real estate attorney, a title company, uh, a mortgage broker, a bank, Bank of Tampa. I have also what is CPA, all you need for, you know, real estate for investors. So like my last closing was an investor who bought a duplex and he said, oh, Betty, now we, he was very grateful for that duplex. He was very happy. He said, okay, you know, when we uh, left the closing, uh, the office, he said, okay, Betty, so now next, in December, I want to have another one before December. I said, yes, that's the way you have to talk. Every year you have to buy something, uh, an investment. So, and then I, uh, yeah, real estate attorney. So you have to put your partners. This is very, very important when you do your booklet. Because when you send them out, you don't talk only about you, but all everything you do and your partners. So when I sent out, because I had a meeting with an immigration attorney, and uh, so I sent him the booklet to talk about me. You know, you don't do a presentation or your bio, just a booklet. It's like, he was like, wow, he told me. 
And I, and I, I realized because I put some hours on it, but then now it's just like out, out there. I just changed my partners and I don't have enough space for my partners because uh, one was like, oh, I realize I'm not in your booklet. I said, oh, well, next time. So, and uh, people see you like a professional when we put the booklet out. So that's very, I think that's great. That's a great idea. Took some time because you have to think, you know, your mindset, what your, are your goals? What type of client do you want? Uh, so you have to do a small presentation or all the tip type because I put a hospitality, motel or hotel because I have a hospitality background. I put warehouse because now multifamily there's, I mean, everybody wants to buy multifamily, but now it's too expensive. So the numbers don't work anymore. And it's going to warehouse now in here in all year. So you have to know your market too. So that's why I am a member of the uh, Economic Club of Tampa. And because you know uh, your market. Oh, and then I forgot I'm also a member of the BNI, Business Networking International. And because I'm French and I'm from Martinique in the Caribbean, so I can talk to the other people from the BNI. It's a culture and they're happy and they feel confident working with another NBI, uh, BNI in the United States. So it's, I think if you don't have, if you are not in a BNI, I really uh, suggest you look and then see how many uh, referrals and deals they do per month before you sign up and you pay your fees. But you can change any which chapter. So, and that's what I would uh, suggest you to do too, if if there's one in your area. Okay, thank you. Fair. Did they answer my? Did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> it, and, okay. Only <laughs> no, something else, and actually, this is for everybody. Um, and Betty's perfect example. Of this most B and I groups already have a, a traditional agent, residential agent, but most do not have a commercial agent. So the fact that you can call yourself or name yourself to be an investor agent, everybody here. Um, if there's, there's only a few guests, but if you're if you're been through the training or on the team, you're an investor agent. You can make that. I can make the case that that includes commercial because it often does. In fact, we got 12 people on the team. We meet every other week at our commercial mastermind because we do commercial deals in addition to our residential business. Sometimes, almost all exclusively commercial. What I'm getting at is, uh, if you interview with a BNI group, make sure you tell them. You have a specialty. You you work with investors, and that often that'll be the way to get in that BNI group. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there are other groups starting up around the country. Now, there was one somebody told me about the other day, and doggone it if I didn't write it down. Um, it's just it's another version of BNI. Um, I'll I'll I'm gonna write this down. I'll, Is I that the we'll, ROI group, Gary? No, that's a different one. That's another one. That's right. Th thanks, Real thanks. estate outside and in the ROI one. Chris Widener's group. Yep. Oh, Chris Weiner. I love that guy. So I, have, yeah. I have a question from John. <laughs> yeah. 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 Betty, what I have learned is every time when you are encouraged or advised to do something or take on a task, you, you do so without hesitation. How is it you do that? <laughs> I say yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, what is fun, funny is that uh, two weeks ago, I was invited to uh, speak about a commercial real estate in front of the top 500 uh, agents in Tampa Bay area, the real producer. Mm -hmm. So it's the uh, um, inspection company, this one of the sponsors who told me, Betty, uh, can you speak? I said, oh, sure, no problem. You know, I thought that was like around the table. And here, when I get into because I was in a restaurant, but I didn't know. And here there is a podium, some stool, and a big screen. And and I like, oh, really? <laughs> I was just yeah. then I start, <laughs> start like, oops. And uh, so and then my mindset switch right away. I said, oh, Betty, you got that. You have that. 
So you have to go out there because that's how, that's how you succeed. Mm -hmm. It's your mindset. And so what happened is that I start talking and with the other commercial realtor. And what I found out is that the title company who was one of the sponsor texted another agent who was coming on her way. And she said, there's a French realtor. You have to be there because she's <laughs> French. <laughs> So, and I met another a commercial realtor from Smith and Associates. So we going to work also together when she has things. So we have coffee, of course, afterwards because there's so many people. And, uh, but then people come to you and I said, well, that's how you feel better. And you say, oh, they understood me. Okay, good. So, and uh, so I met a couple commercial realtors and also residential realtor because they, they want to think about going to commercial, but they also have commercial deals. Yeah, that's amazing so, because that, that was opportunity that you end up experiencing, encountering yes. because mm -hmm. you said yes, yeah. right? Oh yeah. If you, if you yeah. would have said no, like most of us, look yeah. out, look at what potentially we could have missed out on. And uh, I love that. I love that. And then I know that about you. And I wanted to ask that question because, you know, whenever you're given a task, you don't question it. You just do it. Yeah. Just and, do it. and it's not a whether of, do I know how to do it? I'm just going to do it. We'll figure it out. And that's what I like about you. That's what I did. Thank you, John. That's how I did my first workshop at the Tampa Club with Gary. That yeah. was a successful one. Oh, yeah. That was that was one of the one of the better ones that I've I've ever been involved in. It was world class too, guys. I got to tell you, but it that was a challenge. Yeah, but I want to follow up on something too. Is what John was just talking about. <clears throat> what Betty does is Betty opened that one door, right? And because she opened up that one door, all of a sudden, ten other doors come into view, right? And it's amazing when you do that. And I've you know. <clears throat> I don't want to be sensitive to people's everybody's different belief systems, but but there there's there's scripture about this. I mean, there's an, in every possible book you can read, whether there's the 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 Torah, the um, Gita, right, the Quran, um, or the Bible. It talks about living beyond your means. It doesn't just mean spend more money than you make. As a matter of fact, it doesn't mean that at all. What it means is, you know, get outside of yourself, right? Because you are far more capable of, of far more than you could ever possibly imagine, right? And the only way you're going to ever get, even get a glimpse of it is to say yes and open up those doors. When, when opportunity comes to you, you might not, how many of you have done this before? I am so busy. There's no way I can do that. I can't take on anything else. I've probably said it 5 million times in my life, right? You know, but if you just give yourself the opportunity, give yourself permission to do that one thing to say yes, chances are it's coming to you at that time for a reason. It's not on your schedule, right? You know, the, the, the way God works in the universe and creator is it's, you know, it's when the universe thinks you're ready. That's when you get the opportunity. So you have to really train yourself, condition yourself, give yourself permission to say yes, because I promise you this you'll see these other opportunities just as it's like going over the horizon in a car. You'll see something you didn't see 10 minutes back. And if you're worried about, well, how can I, how can I take that on? I don't have the manpower, et cetera, et cetera. Time. You know, that's where Shastine and what she's talked about comes in. You know, she hired a virtual assistant. At one point she had three. They're very inexpensive. Guys, we've got four of them on the operation side, four of them. Um, and I don't mind telling you collectively, they, they make all four of them collectively make $18 an hour, five, five, four, and four, right? And yeah. um, wonderful people. And it's it's not that we're ripping them off. That, had, you know, paying somebody $1,000 a month translates to 50,000 pesos in the Philippines, you know, not too shabby. They, they, yeah. they want more of what we have. You know, they really appreciate everything that we've done here in America. And they want some of that. Okay. So, so uh, I just have a question. Yeah. How many rounds of letters are typically made? Mm -hmm. So I did start with one round and I was like, okay. And I was listening to uh, 
Gary told me, you have to do every week for, for a month. And I said, oh, okay. So I did every week for a month. And then, um, and then it came. And then after I did once a month, and then people, I don't even know which letters from what, but they call me. <laughs> yeah. So I said, oh, I'm sorry, what address? <laughs> yeah. So they call you and then they want to sell. And I have, a, I got a couple of listings from it. Hmm. And what is the really nice part, the sweet part of it is that this, they call you. Right. Yeah. You Way different than you calling yeah. them when they call you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you, some people to... sometimes they say, Oh, you know how many people called me in letters? And I say, Yeah, but you called me. Right. So that means I'm very professional. Yeah. And you used Gary's letter. You didn't do anything different. You just used Gary's letter. I used letter. his letter and I turned some like things because of pretty. my character. You know, I'm very di <laughs> direct. So I did turn a little bit, but I did the short version. <laughs> Justine, Betty's letters smell much prettier than my letters. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that I did the short version. Yeah. And then I changed it a little bit. So, but I mean, it's the letter. And then I put my, uh, I signed it, pen, uh, wet sign, and then I write the address. And, and somebody called me because he liked my writing. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, I didn't make any deal with this, but uh, it's, it's funny because even people keep calling me and I don't know when. When I send the letter, and I don't know where, well, I well, found you know out what, buddy, That brings up something important. So um, there are some new folks on the team. Uh, I know Veronica, Veronica, thanks for being here tonight too, by the way, and I'm glad you're here. So Betty, there's you've you've tried a couple different criteria criteria that we select for really for over the last two years. How many? Yeah, so I, yeah, I did the absentee owner mm -hmm. and tax delinquent. When I did the commercial, I did that too. Okay. So now, because I'm in commercial, I'm looking for a church, so for a, a buyer. So I, I, but this time I'm not sending letter because I don't have time for this because it's one client particular church. Okay. So I decided to uh, do wheel flow. Uh, it's called uh, assembly building. And then I ask, uh, unsack the phone number and I call. I could call because I don't have time for the letters. The letter is more like absentee owner, duplex, multifamily, or tax delinquent, or uh, commercial, same thing. Uh, depends on what you're looking for. But thank you, Catherine, for the booklet. She says, my booklet is beautiful. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's because it is. <laughs> thank you. Hey, Betty, on the letter, you know how I... I did this years ago, guys. I was just playing around with it. And I had this crazy idea. What if I took the letterhead out? Because before I always had the professional letterhead. And if yeah. you look at the letter campaign, you'll see my my more commercial letter that's longer does have a big letterhead. But the one that I did, like Betty said, for it's duplexes and single families, I took the letterhead out. Yes. And lo and behold, response rate went up. You know, I just put on the bottom. Yeah. The logo you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the only explanation I have is that I always start off with the personal name, either Dear Betty, Dear John, Dear Shastine, Dear Gina. Um, and then I go, I'd name the property right off the bat in the first sentence. And then I just, I, and the letter used to be longer, by the way, that I kept making it shorter and shorter down till there's not any much more I can cut out of it. And yeah. that ended up being, it's been 15 years. And that thing still gets used and it outperforms everything that really flow has. But, um, I, I wish I could tell you why I think what it is, is when they see it's to them and they see it's about them, they're more likely to read the paragraph without being distracted by the letterhead, <clears throat> right? Then they're interested in seeing, well, who is this person? I think that's what it is. I, I don't know scientifically. And it's also because I asked them, it's also one told me, I received five letters from you, so I have to talk to you. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, you have to keep sending I mean, like I did the first four weeks and then after it, every two weeks and then after every month. 
So they get used to my, and then after that, I mean, even after a year, I still receive phone calls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It happened to me too. I remember forget the first one, that time I got one, and somebody called me and said, hey, why did you stop sending that letter? But me and the call, I'd just been busy. And it really affirmed my mind because my broker kept telling me, you have to keep selling, sending. I would, because in the beginning, I didn't listen. Like, ah, I didn't get any phone calls on the first one. Forget that, you know. And, uh, but he kept after me and thankfully he did. Um, and I started getting calls. And, but what was really strange was when, and it happened more than once, when I stopped sending him after 12 mailings, I would get calls after that, you know, not a lot, but enough to make it, make me realize I need to, I need to send 12, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, Melanie, I send about 120 letters, 150 per week. So I, and then I slow down after a while because now I don't have time, but I have to look for different, um, like t- uh, rentals also for commercial. And because I'm also a member of the French American uh, Chamber of Commerce. People who move here and they grow their business, like a uh, guy yeah, just opened a business in Clearwater and he wants to find another place in uh, Tampa, South Tampa and St. Pete. So I, that's why I'm just like, okay, I have to organize my days differently with like Shastin. I have to look for BA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, don't. Uh, now, Betty, do you handwrite the the person's address, the receiver's address? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. another thing I think is really important. I we again when we did that, we used to do labels and everything, and they worked. But um, one of the girls that worked for me, Lori Deal, she said, well, "Why don't you let me handwrite them?" And I said, "Well, my handwriting is really bad, and yours is clearly a, a woman's handwriting." She said, "Doesn't matter, just let me do it." And boy, did it work. Yeah. It doesn't matter because my handwriting, you know, I, I just changed a little bit because my handwriting is French. So we do the, the seven with the, you know, yeah. the thing. And so I had to do the seven. So I have to be careful how I write the letters. Mm-hmm. So they understand. I mean, the post guy understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you, just curious, just a kind of a poll for the, for the, for the team here and the class participants. Um, Ray, let me raise your hand or type in the chat box. If you've done a letter before, one way where you hand wrote the recipient's addresses and another way where it was actually computer generated, right? Or if you did it like a, if you did a, mail, a direct mail campaign where it has like the barcode or something. If you, Eric, what was your, did you notice a difference between the one that was computer generated and the one you hand wrote the, in terms of response rates and so forth? Uh, well, I've handwritten and I've also had the computer handwrite it and both of those have always outperformed. Yeah, people can tell. I mean, you, you, we can all tell. Because the funny thing is the computer generated ones often have the barcode either underneath the, the name and address or up above where the the postal, whatever it is they're doing next to the stamp goes. You can I had a local uh, police department call me saying that the owners were freaked out because it looked like I literally wrote it and dropped it in the mailbox. So oh. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, let's see here. Well, I'm um, encouraged to now go look at your letters. Yeah, they encourage me. I have a um, I have a, a direct letter program for uh, probate or estates. I created mm-hmm. five different letters and values to send out to them. But, you know, with how the market may be shifting, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if I need to focus more on, um, you know, like on the absentee owners, on the, you know, going back to estate planning and whatnot. Right. You, you know what we're seeing, Chastine, is um, you remember about two years ago, I was really promoting heavily using the board investor criteria, which is, 10 years of ownership or more, and of course, absent the owner, because they're landlords, they don't live there. And that was working really well for a while. And this is a testament about marketing in general. You got to shake it up every now and then. What you're doing today, remember the Honda commercial with the arrows? That was, and McDonald's, you know, two all beef patties, whatever, that were worked for a while, and all of a sudden, stopped working. So, but back to the letter. Um, 
I had a, I had a excuse me, I, 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 I turned 60 guys. So when this happens and in, in the <laughs> I'm brain yeah, yeah. But, you, you said that you were going to switch it up a bit and you were, you were before two oh, years ago, you were doing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Um, so what we started doing after that was um, long-term owner, right? And the long-term owner, which is 25 years of ownership or more, but it, typically there's no distinguishing between them being owner-occupant or absentee owner and, and owner-occupant. Um, and then it went back to board investor with delinquent taxes and vacancy. If you think about that mindset, a landlord has owned a property 10 years, so they're already depreciated, made money, they're probably ready to, to, to sell it and move up to a bigger property. It's vacant and they haven't paid property taxes. Would you consider that a highly, potentially highly motivated seller? With all yeah. three of those? Yep, so board investor, delinquent taxes, and, abs and a, a vacancy, excuse me. Now, the one before that was long-term owner combined with delinquent taxes. And here's why I did some research, guys. Here's what I found out. Um, last check, there's about $30 billion in unpaid property taxes in the country, okay? This is going back to like November timeframe, I think. Of those people, take a wild guess how many of them had no mortgage on the property. They, were, they owned the property free and clear. Just take a wild guess. Let's see if we get any. 20%. 20%. 20%. 20%. 93%. How many? 90? 93% had no debt on the property of the wow. people who had not paid their properties. That's unreal. Wow. Yep. So think about this. 25 years of ownership. Their kids are probably grown and gone. They may have in the, in the interim probably had to put a new roof on, maybe replace the kitchen. It's a, it's a, they've been there 30 years, 25, 30 years. And more importantly, or just as importantly, they're no longer have their property taxes paid on their behalf from the bank. And they don't remember, they forget, or nobody even told them, hey, just remember, April's gonna come around, you're gonna get this bill and now you gotta pay it yourself, right? And chances are, it looks like, probably looks like junk mail or something they don't wanna open. In any case, who knows what, what the, all the underlying factors are. All I know is that's probably somebody you wanna speak to. Now, that might not be a today listing, but that is easily going to be a tomorrow listing, right? They're, 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 you know, half of them are going to want to move into a nursing room. Half will move to Texas. The other half will move to Florida. That's a lot of hats. <laughs> so, so use the criteria and think through the mindset um, and keep changing it up. Um, not like every month, but I'd say probably once or twice a year, um, try different <laughs> and see if you don't get some, some good results from it, you know? Um, I will tell you, it can be frustrating. I mean, Betty will tell you actually more than I could on the commercial people, particularly the, the, the old men, the guys that are like in their seventies and eighties, they don't want to sign it. They don't, they'll, it's just crazy. You know, it's difficult, you know, but yep. with the owner occupants, it's generally an easier conversation and you don't, you don't have to push them. You just find out, you determine they're obviously motivated or they wouldn't have called you right from your letter. It just might not be today. So this is why you have to nurture them. You know, every, every month send them, Hey, here's what's sold in your area. Just want to keep you up to date. Um, you know, send them, you know, twice a year, or something tips for, you know, spring cleaning for getting your house ready for winter. Um, you know, what would it take to sell your house? You show them a step, I give them a guy. How about this? send them the book how do you sell your house that's a free book on our website that you can rebrand to be your own it's a called public part of the public domain send them that right these are things you can do so uh, um reaching out to people in the mail believe it or not is still a powerful way to do things you just have to be um authentic and genuine about it and that's why handwriting their return their sorry their address is important um hand signing the letter. I never could hand write the letter. We did that by the way, we didn't. We also went from handwriting the, the person's address to handwriting the letter. And that did give us about a 3% bump in uh, in response rates, you know? So, yeah. Oh, there are devices now guys, by the way, that are truly mechanical 
Um, you can buy them. If you go to like NARS annual event, um, they'll probably have them at, at uh, Family Reunion and EXP Con and so forth. They're mechanical devices, so it really is ink, just like you you know picked up a pen and and you know wrote it yourself. You can't tell it's mechanical. They're expensive, but you know for for a couple thousand bucks, you now have you can crank out hundreds and hundreds of letters in a matter of minutes, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're if you're if you want to be a big producer, so any case, I'm trying to go down a rabbit hole here. Let me check the. Um, uh, the chat box here. Justine, this is from uh, Kathy. You're, what kinds of things do you do to attract listings versus buyers? Um, yeah, so for listings, um, I've done the, where if you pick a community, so again, going back to farming. So what I did is I did, you could either do it, whether you're putting it in a packet or you could do it with a one letter sheet that just talks about what the home sold for in that community with a QR code that leads them into your website on getting an evaluation if they wanted to know their value or to put them on HomeBot, um, giving that as a value proposition. HomeBot is great because it allows them to go in and check and, and see if, what it would cost to refi to see if they wanted to do an Airbnb. So it has many different facets to it. So again, you're just providing value by providing information. Usually people are always nosy. They want to know what their neighbor's home sold for anyway. So I find that that to be the most um, opened and the more probability of a response um, by just doing, and like I said, just a one sheet. Now for some of them, um, like when they go into my home bot and they put their information in, um, I um, I actually did, you know, I'll put a letter in there and um, I actually did an actual magazine that gives how I market homes in there, you know, what sets me apart from other people, you know, so it's an actual magazine that talks, you know, and because um, I believe that that's going to be different than what other people are doing. Um, and then, you know, and then based off of them responding, then you move them into another direct mail to where then there's somebody that you're going to be more committed not doing the six month, you know, 500 farm, 800 farm, but you're going to do something more consistent. So even them, I put them into my home by design magazine, which is an actual magazine publication for those of you that don't know what it is, um, to where I can designate with home by design, whether I want them just to get two magazine issues in which I get the front, uh, the front cover and the inside cover, the back cover and the inside cover, where I can do any type of ad or talk about me, 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 or whatever in that, um, but it's something that will stay on their table. And, you know, cause it has things about, you know, kitchens and remodeling. And it's just like a magazine they get at the store. The Home by Design has two different types. So they have a real thin one and then they have a normal thick one. So I do get that one. I think it runs about $3 and 80 cents, but they'll send it out direct. They send it out. You can have it done six times a year, three times a year, two times a year. And then I always do the calendars. So I, I just do that with those that have actively reached out. And then I go and I do a check. Did they list by chance with somebody else, you know, so that I can remove them off of my list, obviously, if they're not there anymore. Um, but, you know, that's been really successful. Um, I did it with a bunch of girls. We did it as kind of accountability in a different um, little coaching program. And, and so we had, a lot of, we had a lot of fun with it. And it was successful. And then, of course, as with everything, you get busy and then you stop doing it unless you leverage. And then <laughs> you leverage, then it might not be dropped, you know. Um, and so, yeah, that's the key is leverage because that's that's the number one thing that works against us all the time. We get busy and then we stop doing the things that we know work, you know. So unless we set something up that it's literally click it and forget it, or you're building it out for six months, then you click it and forget it. Um, then that's where we get that inconsistent roller coaster on this old life. Um, Shastine, is that through Reminder Media? No, uh, Anna, I don't know if they're talking about the, oh, but Shastine, where can we get that magazine? Oh, Home by Design Magazine. Actually, if you guys just look up um, HBD, Home by Design, um, online, it's in there. Um, and that's who I've used. I can see it maybe forward, maybe my reps information over something. Um, John, I have your email, but 
anybody else, let me know. Um, and then um, I think the other one was, uh, is that through Reminder Media? I don't know what Reminder Media is, so I would say no. <laughs> I don't know, you might have to tell me what that is, Anna. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sounds great though, if it reminds you, that's a good keyword. Yeah. yeah. Anna, if you want to unmute yourself, feel free. Because you had a question too, Anna, or a statement on the, you did a split test on a letter. Letter, I'd like you to, to expand on that a little bit, if you wouldn't mind, Anna. You know. Yeah, no problem. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I just I mute myself because because of the little ones. Um, so the split test I did, Gary, was um, I I run a direct mail campaign for short sales, and. Um, one of the times I actually decided I, I had been getting consistent feedback with the handwritten notes with the at least the addresses. So what I realized is that there's no difference if you print the return label, but there's a big difference in the response rate when you hand uh, when you print their address, their uh, you know the outgoing um, the address C. If you hand print the address C, you actually increase your response rates. If you hand print the return label, you don't necessarily do the same. It doesn't have the same effect. Mm -hmm. So one time I uh, I had I had tested uh, when I digitally printed both the address C and the um, and the sender field my response rates completely tanked. Um, and so I had done that on purpose. I just wanted to see if it really does uh, does have an impact and it really did. Um, but what I was saying to Estine about the magazine, I subscribed to a magazine through Reminder Media and um, it sounds like very similar. I'll have to look up uh, yours as well. Um, mine is through Reminder Media and they have, um, I believe right now about four different publications you can choose. Um, there is like American Home Life, or I can't even remember. I have a whole bunch of them. You can select to have promotional copies sent to you, and you can also have addressees um, on their database. So it's a CRM where you essentially upload a list of contacts that you want them to consistently send your publications to. Uh, it sounds like the same thing. I, I'd love to see how the costs compare though. So if you don't mind, I'll reach out to you later. Okay. But mine is for reminder media. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I wish I would have had one of my magazines up, up here so that you could see. Yeah, that, it, it, John put it in the chat. It looks like if you click on that link on the chat, John put it in the chat. Okay. Yeah, okay. what I can do is uh, in our in our work um, workplace chat chat, I can also include uh, pictures of mine as well. That way we can compare testing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Awesome. Wow. Well, thanks, guys. Let me let me check the time here. I know we're probably way past the hour, but oh, not too bad. Eight eight twenty five Eastern, five twenty five California time. So. Guys, if you have questions, I mean, I'll stay on as long as you guys want. Shastine and Betty and John, I, I just, I can't thank you guys enough. I mean, this has probably been one of my most favorite classes. And, um, you know, being able to have you guys participate and, the, and all the students ask questions. I mean, um, what a great gift. And guys, if we could give them a big uh, applause and pat on the back because the, the, the pay for this is really good. They, they they get two pats on the back for me for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. But totally, totally of the you know voluntary. We asked them and they they re responded. It's just amazing. And um and also how about a pat on the back for Anna because Anna is on fire right now. I I, I don't know if I can keep track of the transactions we've got, Anna. You know. So, okay. Any final questions? I I just put my my contact information there. So if anybody wants to call me, I'm always available to chat. Cool. Okay. All right. Going once. Oh, we got looks like 12. Oh, that's people probably saying thank you. Hang on one second. Yay, Anna. Yep. Okay. I think there's John's information. Um Gina Hanson, you guys rock. Uh all right, thanks everybody. Well, listen, uh, for, for the guests, 
Um, this is the recording is going to go out tomorrow. So look for an email. I don't know who's it, it might say it's for me, but it's, it's really from the um, Beverly sends it out from the system in the uh, it'll probably say in there like support at real estate with Gary Wilson.com or R E W G W. I don't actually know for sure, but keep an eye out for it. It does have the recording and you're welcome to come to any class you want. Uh, we appreciate you being here and for all the team members and, 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 other students, I mean, you guys are awesome. Uh, Melanie, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're glad you're had a great vacation, and thanks for participating too and helping out. You know, you thanks for all you do, and thanks everyone. This is great. Appreciate you. You're welcome, and thanks to Thank Gina, you. the silent hero. She's the one. Gina's the one behind the scenes doing like this, Geppetto, making sure everything works. So, yeah. Thank you. My husband called me, and I'm like, I can't. I'm running tech. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's you doing this, Gina, but I have like a person panel and I'm like, this is amazing. I you didn't know, know it would do it. So there you go. Yeah, that was a big, big, big help. I appreciate it. Well, you're listen, awesome. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I said you're awesome, Gina. Thanks, darling. Um, next week, let me see if I wrote it in. I'll give you guys a quick heads up here. Um, oh, proppy.com. P-R-O-P-Y.com. So one of the reps is coming on to teach and they have an excellent platform where they help people buy properties. Um, you can use their, their title company, which is uses blockchain processing. You can purchase with crypto or you can use regular, you know, fiat, which is what we call money. Right. Um, but also unlike a lot of other um, companies that do this, they not only encourage, they they have real estate agents as part of the process. So it's a way for you to participate in properties being bought, bought online, okay? Um, so that's next Monday night. Um, if you guys need anything between now and then, uh, please set up a one-on-one -on -one with me. If you're if you're a student or on the team, you have the, the link for my schedule. If you're a guest, um, just email me, gary at rewgw.com. And I, I see we got a couple of guests on Cheyenne's on. Cheyenne, good to see you. I'm glad, I'm glad you made it, Cheyenne, all the way from beautiful LA. Um, okay. You guys have a good night, a good rest of the week. God bless you and your families. And I'll see you on the one-on-ones for next Monday night. Sound good? Thank you. Bye-bye. Sounds good. Thanks. Good night. Bye, everyone. Good night.